You don't need another YouTube video or Udemy course after watching today's tutorial. 20% of work gets you 80% of results. That's Pareto's principle. In this video, I'll cover the most useful 20% programming concepts in less than 4 minutes. I'll also tell you the best way to learn the remaining 80% concepts. I'm using Python but all the ideas will be the same no matter which language you choose. Let's set the clock to 240 seconds and see if I can deliver on my promise. So we have a number 1 which is equal to 4 and number 2 which is equal to 3. We can do all kinds of operations on these two numbers like addition, subtraction and multiplication etc. We can put all these operations inside a list by using these two square brackets and call our list operations. Notice the quotes around different operations. We use them to tell the computer that these words are what we call strings in programming and are different from things like operations number one and number two because those are called variables. This difference will become more clear as we go through the tutorial. Now we want to do all these operations on these two numbers. So for every operation in operations, we just want to do the operation. This is called a for loop which is used whenever you want to do something again and again. In this case, we want to do these operations again and again. Now this operation can be add, subtract, multiply or divide. If the operation is add, add number 1 and 2 and store the result in a variable called sum. Notice that we used equal sign two times to check the equality here. That's because a single equality sign is already used to set value of our variables. Moving on, else if the operation is subtract. Subtract the numbers and store the value in a variable called difference. Notice that ELIF here is a short for else if and we do the same for multiplication and division. But wait, how does a computer know what add or multiply etc mean? We need to define these for the computer by using what we call functions in programming. So define an add function that takes number 1 and number 2 as input and returns you number 1 plus number 2. Similarly, we define subtract, multiply and divide. To check if the result is correct, we print the value of variable sum along with the line telling us that this is the sum of number 1 and number 2. We do the same for other operations. Moment of truth, let's run this and see what it does. Voila, we have printed out sum, difference, multiplication and division correctly. But this code is not clean. Before we move on, I wanted to tell you about my free email crash course, Interview Master. In this course, I will show you how much data structures and algorithms you need to know to crack big tech companies. I will also share exact problems you need to solve on lead code. Not only that, you can also win an editable version of my Google resume. After you finish the course, you will also get a weekly coding challenge and its solution. All of this is available for free on interviewmaster.io. We have thrown together a bunch of functions that can actually be combined together to give our code some structure. If you think about it, all the operations we are doing with these functions is something a calculator would do. So let's do one thing. Let's create a template called calculator. And this template would contain all our functions. In programming, a template is called a class. To indicate computer that we are creating a class, we need to write class before the calculator. Notice that unlike functions and variables, we capitalize the first letter C because calculator is a class. In Python, every function inside a class needs to take self as its first input. You can think of self as a short for myself because it can be used to get access to other functions and variables in the same class. For example, let's say that for some absurd reason, the add function wants to multiply the numbers first. It can do so by saying self.multiply number 1 number 2. Notice that we use a dot to access variables and functions inside a class. Anyway, let's move on to the fun part and use the calculator class that we just created. Let's create a variable called calculator which is equal to the class calculator. Notice that we wrote capital C to use the class because that's how we defined it earlier. These round brackets are telling the computer that we want to create a copy of the calculator template or class. This copy is also called an instance of calculator. Just trying to teach you some programming terminology here. That's why this calculator variable on the left side is an object that's actually an instance of calculator class. And this way of defining a class and creating an object that is an instance of that class is also called object-oriented programming. Now you have an object calculator which was created using calculator class. So the calculator object should also have all the functions defined inside calculator class. And if you remember, we use dot to access functions inside a class. Technically speaking, we are using a dot here to access functions inside the object and not the class because class is just a template. You are creating an object to use its functionality. If you understand this, add will now become calculator.add, subtract will become calculator.subtract and so on. Let's run the program again and voila, exact same result as before. That is it. 
Stop the clock and we are done. I know what you are thinking. I already know most of this. He did not cover inheritance. He didn't even talk about polymorphism. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Let me go watch another YouTube tutorial or buy a Udemy course. Trust me, I understand that. I have been in your position before. I have my own Udemy wall of shame with incomplete courses to prove it. Please hear me out. You see, there is a simple rule of thumb when it comes to learning programming. If your code is not breaking enough, you are not truly learning any programming. When you think about it, this mostly happens in two cases. One, when you're just copying other people's code in your own editor while watching tutorials. Their code works, which means your code also works. Sure, it's okay to do that for basics, but beyond a certain point, you are just memorizing and not really learning. Second case where it happens is when you are not challenging yourself enough. Maybe you are building simple things that are within your comfort zone, or you are watching same tutorials again and again. In both the cases, you are not growing as a programmer. So here is what I recommend to learn the rest of the 80% concepts. If you can understand what I taught today, you don't need another programming tutorial. Stop looking for the best programming language. Pick any language that you like. Open your code editor and code, and then code some more. Build things that excite you. Break things and fix them. Keep doing this over and over again and I promise you, in 6 months from now, you'll be ahead of many who have been watching tutorials for years. You will never be able to learn 100% of what there is to learn. But hey, I'm no programming whiz and I'm doing just fine. If you agree with me and are pumped to build some projects, here is a video where I share 5 projects with increasing difficulty level. Some of these projects were even built by Bill Gates in his early days. My name is Sahil and I wish you good luck breaking code.